I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to talk about message boxes, which are a very handy way to give some feedback to users, uh, whether or not you just want to tell them something and then have them click OK, or whether you want them to say yes or no as a response to your message box. Uh, and, and we're going to look at how to find out um, how to figure out the, the return values for some of the other message boxes if you don't know uh, what the, the VB equivalents are. So without further ado, let's get to our message box in Microsoft Access. Looking for coaching or one-on-one -on -one help on your project? Check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. Okay, so this is a file that we've used many times already, um, and I've filtered it for the word message there. You can see MSG in the uh, search box, and I'm just gonna make a form. So I've just created a new form, and I'm gonna go to the design view here, and we're gonna use this form just to demonstrate some of the message boxes that we wanna show. So I'm gonna save it as uh, MSG form, and now you can see it appears in the list on the left because it's filtered by MSG. And now I'm going to go to uh, my form design and I'm going to, just for demonstration, I'll throw a text box on there. I don't know, I'll call it name. And, uh, uh, and we'll plunk a name in there and then, and then we'll, put a, we'll put a button on there as well. So that's going to give us a a nice event uh, trigger uh, when we click the button that we can you know see uh, what's going to happen and we can create a message box for our users and so what I'll do is I'll change the name of our text box to something that makes sense and you know to our programming so we know what's going on so I'll put a txt name there and then I'm going to grab a button uh, from the toolbar just like we did and uh, your wizard might pop up like this and in, in this case we're just going to hit cancel and we'll we'll put our own uh, title on there we'll call it message and uh, this will be the message button and we'll do the same thing that we did with the text box I'm going to click on it go into the properties under other and I'll change the name to a CMD uh, message um, and that's going to be nice for our programming because when we uh, call CMD message and when we go into here it's going to create a nice descriptive name for it so we're going to click on the ellipsis on the on click there and then we'll choose the code builder and we'll go OK and then that's going to pop up our, our IDE window um, and now you can see that this form has a, it, it's got the form code in here and we have a CMD message underscore click event which is going to fire whenever somebody clicks on that message button and that's exactly what we want and at the top here I'll add a message just saying you know give the give the user a feedback message and I'm gonna uh, put a variable in here I'll call it uh, var at val which I usually use for you know sort of uh, return values that could be anything. If I don't specify the data type on it, it will default to a variant data type, which is what we want. And, uh, and then I'll just, uh, we'll start off. We won't use the variable just yet, um, but our first example of a text box is just going to, or a message box is going to be, um, you know, you click the message button and uh, with nothing else attached to it this is the simplest version of, of message box that you can that you can use and uh, you can see now if I open this up go back to design and then open it in form view now we've got our our uh, form open and if I click that that um, message button there you can see it's got Microsoft access and it has our message in it and an OK button and that's very very basic and you might be wondering, you know, how can I spruce up my message box? Um, can't I add some formatting to it? And the answer is yes. Uh, there's, some there's some sort of standardized um, ways that you can configure your message box. 
A uh, very simple one is just to say VB information. Uh, in this case, it'll put the little I um, icon in there for information. And, uh, and you can also put a title on the text box so it doesn't say Microsoft Access in the title bar of the text box. Uh, you can put something in there. So now, now you can see there's the little I that you know got added to our message. And you can see there's our message uh, title. And that makes it look a little bit nicer for, for users. Um, so you can also, you know, in your text boxes, you can incorporate data from other parts of your application or context-based information. In this case, I'll, I just put a name in, into the uh, text box, and now we, can, uh, now we can, you know, get that data as if it was something in our application. In this case, we're just going to say, uh, Jim, you click the message button. Uh, but we could change that to another name if we wanted to uh, by changing it on the form. And so we can also change the context of it. So if I put VB exclamation instead of VB information, then it's a little bit more aggressive. Um, you can see it has the, the yellow triangle with the exclamation mark. This would be if you wanted to warn somebody uh, about something. Um, and if you use those ones more sparingly, uh, the, the exclamation and critical ones, then when people do see them, they will uh, react accordingly. But if you make every message a critical message, it's not going to be that great. Um, so in this case, I used the critical um, type, and you can see it came up with the red X on it, and that's that's you know, if somebody has done something very serious or the application is crashing or something's gone terribly wrong, you can use the VB critical uh, in your application. So I would, again, recommend that you use those sparingly, the exclamation and critical. Uh, use information, the information type for most of your message boxes, unless there is actually something critically wrong or, you know, or needs an ex. Uh, sort of like an exclamation added to it, then, then you can use those ones. Now we can change our, our message box, and you can see I've added the, uh, the return value in front of uh, the message box with an equal sign, and that's basically means that it, we're going to ask it to return a value to us, and we're going to use the VB yes, no plus VB question, so you can add those types together, um, so you can try try out some of those yourself. Um, and now it's going to have a yes, no type. And then it's going to have a VB question as part of the uh, display of the text box. And so uh, now what we can do is now we have a return value. Once that line has been processed and somebody clicks yes or no, then our return value variable there, it, it's going to have either a VB yes or VB no. Uh, as a return value, and so uh, we might, you know, have a bunch of code that runs uh, for each of those cases, depending on what what happened. And so this is a nice way to to ask a user, "Hey, do you want to do do you want to do this or no? You don't want to do it." There's our return value, and um, and the else in this case would be VB no. Um, I'll just put that as a comment there in case you wanted to know what the VB equivalent is there. And so if I go back to our form and I open that, you can see, hey, Jim clicked the message button. Do you wish to continue? There's our title and everything as we set it up. And then if I say yes, it's, it says, OK, you can proceed. And if I say no, it says process aborted. And you could have a bunch of other code that runs in the case that he said no. And that covers our, you know, our yes, no messages or our OK messages. Um, but there are some other kinds of messages that we might use, and um, sometimes we don't know what the VB equivalent is. That's a, the VB yes, VB no there. And, and so we might want to use a particular box, and you, know, you can Google the types, and you can go and find those, 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 uh, uh, those variables that you can put in there, you know, like VB yes or VB no. Uh, but some case, in some cases, you might not know what those are. And so what you can do is you can 
uh, you can find out what the message is or the return value um, just by outputting the value into you know either the debug window or into a message box of their own uh, so that you can you know see what the you know what the user clicked and then you can just base your uh, your code after that off of those um, those direct values um, so in this case I'm gonna say message box process isn't working uh, and we're going to use the abort retry ignore um, type and you can see that came up nicely um, and now what we can do is we can we can say well I don't know maybe I don't know what the type is uh, is it VB abort VB retry v, VB ignore it probably is uh, but maybe you know maybe it isn't and if you're working with a different type it might not be immediately ob obvious and so you can just test it by, you know, putting the return value into a message box. Okay, that one's a three. What if I click on, uh, what if I check, check out the retry? Well, that returns a four. And then, you know, check out uh, ignore, and that's a five. So now we can run our code off of those numbers instead of using uh, the descriptive uh, variable. And that's very handy for, you know, especially if you're working with other types um, sometimes it's not immediately obvious which one it's going to be so we could do a, a select case and direct our code accordingly we could say select case you know a return value case three message you know in this case i'll just say message box aborted case four uh, message box uh, you know retry or we can go ahead and retry it I suppose, and um, and then for the final uh, case, we can say we're, we'll ignore that because we know that five, a return value of five is ignore, and um, so we'll say message box um, ignored, and and so that's something uh, that you can do is you can use a select case um, to direct your code after a message box has been run, and that's very very handy. When you do use select case, you should always put a, a case else in there um, in case there's some, somehow there happens to be some other <laughs> value that gets returned. Um, you should always put it in even if you know or you feel like you know there's no other possible case, you should uh, uh, put, a, put a case else in there so that you capture all possible outcomes from that scenario. And so now I can click my message button. I can say the process isn't working. If I click abort, it says abort. If I click retry, it says, you know, retry now and run some code. If I say ignore, then we ignored it. And uh, that is how you can use message boxes with VBA in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use message boxes in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel Click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.